Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about room openings and those are windows and doors. So let's talk about those two things because all of our rooms have a door, obviously. Hopefully most of them don't have windows, but unfortunately they do. So windows, what's our thing with windows? If we're talking about noise, they're the weakest link in the whole room because they're just little thin panes of glass. So if there's any noise outside, guess where it's going to come in first? It, whether the window's open or not, it's going to come through the glass, okay? Because it's the weakest link in the structure. It's the least dense part of the structure. And sound is like water. It looks for the weakest place or the hole to come through, and it will. So it's the weakest length because it has the lowest density. Now, most walls that I see today don't have enough density to stop a bike with a ringer on, on its handlebars. So, you know, that's another issue. But if there's a, a two by four wood framed wall with drywall on e each side and a window, you got two issues. You got low density uh, for the window and you got low density for the wall. So you got the whole structure leaking and obviously acoustically the room sinks like a, ba like a ship. So we got windows, and what's the other issue? The reflections off the glass, which we all know from past videos, have a negative impact on mid-range frequencies. You can actually measure that. You know, you can see the spatial irregularities in, in, in response. You don't even have to measure. You can listen with your own ears and hear it. It really destroys mid-range frequencies. So we, we don't want glass in any rooms at all. I'm almost getting to the point where I don't want to even design rooms that have glass in them. If the client has requirements for glass, we can do it, but here's what we do. If this is our uh, listening position, and here's our speakers, we get the windows up here, above everything, see? So they're not in our sound field. They're not in our domain of listening. They're above, so we get the natural light but they're not really impacting the horizontal sound field. So we, st we stay away from the negative impacts and still get the, the uh, natural light. How many rooms you see have that kind of configuration? Hardly any. Most you see are this, you know, sidewalls. We'll have one window here, another window here. Well, yikes. It's no good at all. So, you know, the bottom line is windows are not a good thing. So doors we got to have, obviously, to get in and out of the room. So. How do we treat doors? Well, we can use absorption and diffusion. We hang diffusion on doors all the time. We hang absorption on doors. We hang absorption on windows. So you can treat them, but you gotta be able to give up the sacrifice. So on windows, we have a sliding foam panel system. It's a series of panels that you move back and forth over the windows. When you're not using them, you move them to the side. When you're using them, you put them over the windows. So there's ways to do it. Now, in an ideal world, if we have our choice and can position doors and windows, we want to put them behind our listening position. We can treat them then, and it, and it won't bother us. The glass behind us won't bother us as much as the glass on each sidewall at ear level. So get our doors and windows behind us if you guys out there that are designing new rooms or, or thinking of a property with a room. Get the doors and windows behind you so you can treat them and they won't have such a negative impact on the whole situation. So windows, bad for noise, bad for treatment. They're really a nemesis that drives me crazy half the time. So you got to be win really willing to treat the windows if you're going to have critical audio listening. There's just no way around it, whether it's a theater, mix room, vocal room, or anything like that. So. And doors, we got to get into the rooms, but try to design the room so the doors are behind you and in a corner. And here's a little trick that you can do. When you're listening to music that has low frequency energy, open the door so that it leaves. I had a guy the other day send me a, a project that he was designing. And it was pretty interesting because he left four doors in the corners of the room. So when he was listening to music, just a two channel system, when he was listening to music, he'd open these doors. So they were open and they acted like pressure release valves. And he, he said, I want to try that to see how it works. And I said, well, it will work because it'll eliminate pressure. Anything you can do to, to eliminate pressure. I said, but go ahead and eliminate the whole rear wall if you can. 
because you don't even need that in a two-channel listening room. If we don't have a rear wall, that's even more ideal. So he said, well, I can't do that. You know, the wife won't let me. I hear that a lot. So he wants to open the door. So I said, go ahead and try it and report back to me. I said, but you're still going to have to treat the axial modal pressure between the walls because your room's only 14 feet wide. So you're still going to have low frequency between here, but the low frequency issues that you have in the corner will be mitigated through that kind of pressure release valve by opening the door. So be careful with windows and doors. Get them out of the way. Get them behind you. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.